I've never seen a freshwater mussel before. Or clam. If I go over my boots, I'm in trouble. Look at that. Look at this, William. Me and the little fella come out for a little ride, and uh, this is the last day of Parmican season, so we took the gun with us. And uh, on the way back the other day, me and my buddy was here, and I seen some uh, what I called uh, freshwater mussels or clams, and I looked at one, and I threw them back, and I went back and I Googled it, and the only uh, freshwater clam we have here in Labrador is supposed to be the uh, eastern pearl shell and uh, they looked a bit different and so done a little research so I said I'm gonna come back and get a couple more samples and try to figure out what it is for sure so that's what we're doing here buddy we got a couple samples have a little look around seeing to find like a big one or something because it might get darker you know as you that's a real yeah that's the real clam digger I just careful on the edge of that water there, buddy. Why don't you do it here? I'm a little look here now. So we have to see. How's you making it over there, buddy? There's some live ones there, but I just want to shill. Look at that. That worked out much better. But it's all decayed, look. Huh? On the inside, you should be able to tell what kind of, uh, something there, uh, uh, something living on there, too. On my finger now. And, uh, when the, when the clams kind of spawn or whatever, uh, it goes in the water and it gets on uh, like a small salmon par or salmonoid and they'll stay on the small salmon for so long and then after all it'll fall off and we, whoever it falls off to is where I guess they'll spend the rest of their life unless you get like a flash flood or something and push them further down the brook. Well guys I'm back at the shed here now with my samples. <laughs> And uh, what really sparked uh, my interest uh, with these shellfish is uh, I believe this is a species that's uh, not known about in Labrador. I'll start by saying uh, the freshwater clams of North America, also called freshwater mussels, are bivalves. And so when we talk about mussels and clams here, we're talking about the same thing. All right, I'm here on the Newfoundland and Labrador uh, website, and there are a total of 55 freshwater mussel species in Canada, and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador is home to two species, the Eastern Pearl Shell and the Newfoundland Floater. And the Eastern Pearl Shell is in Newfoundland Island and also in Labrador, but uh, the Newfoundland Floater is only on Newfoundland Island. So the only species of freshwater mussel slash clam in Labrador would be the eastern pearl shell. So in this video, uh, I'm going to show why I first that I think that this is not eastern pearl shell, and then I'll give you my thoughts on uh, what I think it could be. And uh, I really appreciate it if anyone out there that knows anything about freshwater clams and mussels, please do share because I'm really trying to identify uh, what they are for sure. Eastern pearl shell, uh, they can get up to uh, six inches long. Now these are three inches long, but these could be uh, juveniles or whatever. So that really don't uh, say much about what it could be, but uh, but right here it says the shell can be thick and dark, and shell rays absent. Color light brown juveniles to black and adults. Now first, thick and dark. Uh, these shell on these are very thin, I would say. And it's definitely not dark. And it says that shell rays absent. Now, if you look closely, 
just arrange them here in a certain way so on the ends you can see like the shill rays on the end there and even like looking from the inside of this shell you can see like shill rays now you can see how dark the eastern pearl shell is but like I said now these are juveniles or younger ones so they could get darker with age but but uh, when you look right here and like align the hinge here the hinge right here this hinge teeth right here I guess you see this part right here now when I look at these shells right here I'm not seeing that and also this old shell right here Now, as the shield, if they were young and as they got older, this would become better uh, identifiable. But uh, but right now, I'm not really seeing, I'm not really seeing that like little structure right there, like that. And on the inside, it says it's usually white with faint pits centrally located, each with a faint tail that points towards the beak cavity. And that's a close-up of the pits right there. And so this here is, uh, you can see, is pretty white. I'm just going to go over to the eastern floater here now and they say the color is silvery white or metallic blue sometimes with a yellowish tinge towards the beak cavity and they don't have those uh, little pits running in the center I'm going to show a couple of pictures here now this is this is one of the pictures of the one the, one of the ones that I collected uh, you can't see the, the center so there still could be the piece of shell is missing there where there's possibly could be little pits in that but the, you can see right here like the color of the shell itself is almost like even like a little bit of like a mother of pearl and this this is one of the, this is the old shell that I found and if you look you can now see like a little mother of pearl there like that as well so so if it was the eastern pearl shell I guess it would be more pearly white now I'm just going to look at an eastern floater now uh, I'm not saying that these are eastern floaters but when you look at the shell, the color yellowish green, green to greenish brown. And when I look at these, especially when they first come into water, I would say that would be a much better description on the coloration. Uh, yeah, let me see. The hinge limb ligament is either straight or curved slightly upward. Valves laterally inflated thin and fragile. So these here are definitely thin and fragile and with more proper coloration. I'm going to scroll down right here. Now when you look at the, the hinge teeth, you don't see that that little structure we was looking at on the eastern pearl shell. And it would look a lot more like what we're seeing here. I wouldn't say identical, but it's very similar. And also when you go look at uh, go back up here when you look at the the rays uh, chill rays either absent or very faint so this here is a eastern floater and they're saying the rays are absent or very faint and when I look at a picture here this is a picture of this is saltwater mussels right here and this is freshwater and this is actually an eastern floater now you see those rays and those rays is pretty identical to the rays we're seeing here and these shills. I'm not saying that these are eastern floaters, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe it is a type of floater muscle slash clam. Uh, I know they have a Newfoundland floater. I couldn't really find a good picture of those. And uh, I've seen also pictures of a joint floater that had very similar rays like this as well. And so... This could be the big land floater or big lands floater, I guess. But uh, I'm uh, so anyway. That's why uh, I made this little video just to see what you think. Uh, please share your opinions. I really appreciate it because this could be a new species that's not known to Labrador, and that'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's put all the evidence that I do have. But uh, but anyway, I really want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, please leave a comment and uh, see. Uh, we figure this uh, figure this out.